uh, thinking about being shaped to serve this morning. Amen. As we look at chapter 12, uh, verses 1 and 2. Amen. Uh, talking about living a fully surrendered life. Amen. Living a fully surrendered life. You know, uh, as a preacher, pastor, I've been preaching now for uh, over 12 years. Amen. And I have actually preached this uh, text or these verses in some respect, either one or two or one and two. Five times in 12 years, and each time I preached it, I preached it a different way. Amen. Uh, but nevertheless, the Word of God is still there. Amen. And, and as I was looking at this, uh, these scriptures today, uh, God just showed me something that I have never seen before. Amen. He showed me in a, in a different way. We as believers, we as human beings, we have a body. We have soul, uh, which encompasses our mind, our will, our emotions, amen, and, but we are a spiritual being, amen, we are a spirit who has a soul, who lives in a body, amen, and oftentimes what we find ourselves doing, amen, uh, I believe it was actually alluded to uh, what Rick Buzzer Carey was talking about, we surrender part of ourselves, but not all of ourselves, amen, sometimes we'll surrender our body, uh, but we won't surrender our mind, we won't surrender our emotions, we won't surrender our will, amen, and sometimes we say we're surrendering ourselves unto God, amen, but it's only in word and not in deed, amen, uh, we have maybe a desire uh, in our, our soul to do uh, what God has called us to do, but then the body uh, falls short of our own doing, amen, not because it can't, but just simply because we never follow through, amen, but as believers, if we uh, realize, as we realize, that we are shaped to serve and that God has created us and made us a masterpiece uh, with the uh, assignment, with the purpose, with the destiny of serving him and bringing him glory, amen, we have to live a fully surrendered life as believers, amen, if there's any part of us that God does not have, amen, that means that God does not have us all available for his use, amen, and so Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 deal with living a fully surrendered life, amen, amen, and so we want to read this text and then we're going to get right into the message for this morning, amen, are y'all with me, amen, Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, Paul says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And God had a blessing to the hearing, reading, and doing of his word. Amen. Amen. So we have a motive, first of all, uh, for us in order to be fully surrendered, in order to uh, have the desire. We have a motive as believers. And Paul says, first of all, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Amen. Notice that Paul does not give a command. Amen. He does not give a command because we have a motive to do it on our own. Amen. So he does not command us to present our bodies. He doesn't command us to be transformed. He doesn't command us to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He does not command us, but he gives us motivation for doing it. Are you with me, church? And so Paul says, first of all, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Amen. He's talking about the church of Christ as a whole. Amen. And I'm not talking about the denomination. I'm talking about the universal church of Christ, which encompasses all believers. Amen. From all ages, God uh, uh, calls us brethren, whether we are our are, are brothers or sisters in Christ. Here he is addressing the church as a whole. Amen. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Amen. That's our motivation right there. By the mercies of God. Our motive to become fully surrendered is by the mercies of God. In light of what God has done for us. Amen. 
Amen. I am his masterpiece. Amen. Not of my own doing, but because of God's plan of salvation. Amen. Which I have accepted, which is only found in his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In light of what God has done for me, his mercy, his grace, and his love. Amen. Because of that, that is my motive to live a fully surrendered life. Amen. Unto God. Amen. And, and so if that is our motive, amen, now Paul, real, we should realize that Paul does not command us to do it because we should be motivated because our, of our relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you with me, church? Amen. And so, so Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Amen. And this, this brings us to our first point, because now we see that we are motivated. We see that what our motive is. Amen. And, and we see that nobody should have to beg us. Amen. But that we should do it in light of God's mercy that he has extended unto us. Amen. So first of all, we must fully surrender our body. Amen. We must fully surrender our body. The text says that you present. Amen. That you present. This word present in the Greek is a technical term for presenting the Le uh, Levitical uh, uh, offerings. Amen. In the Levitical sacrifices, the offerer placed his offering so as to face the most, uh, the most holy place, thus bringing it before the Lord. When you walk into uh, the tabernacle of meeting, when you walk into the temple, amen, the first thing that you come to is the altar. Amen. And, and as you are facing the altar, you are facing the temple. And so when the sacrifice is made on your behalf on the altar, you are bringing it or presenting it to God. But Paul says that we should present our bodies. Amen. We should present our bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Because the Levitical offerings were dead. Amen. Once they were offered, they were offered. Amen. They wouldn't know offering them again. But as believers in light of God's mercy, that we are to present our bodies. Amen. Continuously as an offering unto God. Amen. And so if we want to be fully surrendered, first of all, we have to fully surrender our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy. That means set apart unto God. For his use. Amen. Holy, acceptable to God. God had a standard for the Old Testament offerings that they weren't supposed to just bring anything, but they were supposed to bring the best of the best. Amen. And our, our, our offering of our bodies is acceptable when we surrender our best unto God. Amen. Amen. So we should never bring to God our leftovers. We should never bring to God the least of what we can do. Amen. We should always present our bodies in, in, in full reverence to the God that we serve. Because again, we're doing this in light of the mercies of God that he has extended unto us. Are you with me, church? So our bodies are a living sacrifice. Our bodies are holy. Our bodies should be acceptable or well pleasing in the sight of God. And the Bible says, which is your reasonable service? Amen. Amen. Which is your reasonable service? This word reasonable in the Greek uh, deals with that which is logical or that which is rational. Amen. Uh, it's not reasonable as it's the least that you can do. Amen. Because if it was the least that we can do, Paul wouldn't deal with verse 2. Amen. He wouldn't have said verse 2 if that was the least that we can do. But in, 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 in light of the mercies that God has extended unto us, amen, it is reasonable now that we present our bodies unto God. For him to use. Are you with me church? And I think the NIV calls it a spiritual act of worship. 
Amen. The New King James says, which is your reasonable service. And this service is an act of worship. The presentation of the offerings in the Old Testament was an act of worship unto God. And so Paul now says our bodies, presenting our bodies unto God is an act of worship unto God. Are you with me, church? Yeah. And so we, we, we must fully surrender our body if we want to live a fully surrendered life. Amen. That means that we have to be at church when the doors are open. Amen. We have to be on time. I'm talking to myself this morning. When the church doors are open. Amen. We have to present our bodies for God to use. So we have to look for those opportunities when God opens those doors in our life to share the gospel with G uh, of Jesus Christ with those we come in contact with. That's presenting our bodies. Amen. For him to use. Are you with me church but not only are we to present our bodies we are we must fully surrender our mind amen we must fully surrender our mind verse 2 says and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed do not be conformed to this world but be transformed. Uh, this conformed is presented in the uh, present passive imperative. Uh, it means stop being fashioned or do not have the habit of being fashioned to conform to another's pattern. Amen. So our mind should not be shaped by the world. Amen. Our mind should not be shaped by the world. One commentator said uh, this refers to the act of an individual assuming an outward expression that does not come from within him, nor is it represented, re representative of his inner heart life. Amen. <laughs> Let me, let me say it like this. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, God seals us with the Holy Spirit and we become heals. So how can we as believers allow the world to shape our mind into who we become? Amen. So Paul says, do not conform to the world. Amen. Do not the, let the world dictate to you who you are. Amen. Do not let the world dictate to you what you are to be, what you are to do. Amen. Don't let the world tell you what a good, good Christian, amen, should do. Amen. But Paul says, do not be conformed to the world. He says, but be transformed. Amen. He says, be transformed. The transformation is an inner change. Amen. The verb occurs in two settings in the New Testament, two other settings in the New Testament. First is Mark 9 and, and actually Matthew uh, 17, 2, where Jesus said to have been transfigured, <laughs> transformed before his three disciples. And first of all, this transformation was outwardly, but the outward transformation was a reflection of the inner being of who Christ was. Amen? So what they saw was the divinity of Christ. Amen? If you read the text, it says that, that uh, he, he lit up. He was illuminated. Amen? And so this transfiguration was an outward transformation representative of what was already in him. Amen? Okay, so that, that's the first uh, 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 setting in the New Testament where it was used, and it's also used in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where Paul taught believers uh, as they be, behold the glory of the Lord, says we are being transformed into his likeness. That means what is in us is being transformed into Christ's likeness. 
And what is in us is going to eventually show on the outside. Are you with me, church? Amen. The transformation of which Paul uh, speaks of in Romans 12, 2, is not a change effected from without, but a radical reorientation that begins deep within the human heart. In light of God's mercy, as we have accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ for salvation and present our bodies, we now are being transformed, a radical reorientation that begins deep within the human heart. If we have truly encountered Jesus Christ, we will not stay the same. Amen? Yeah, yeah, you may have came to Christ all messed up. Amen. We all came to Christ all messed up. But as we walk with the Lord, as we fully surrender unto him, we won't stay as messed up as we was. Amen. That's why they said the things I used to do, I don't do no more. The places I used to go, I don't go no more. Amen. Amen. Pastor preached a sermon a while back, walking upside down in the dark. Uh, walking in the wrong direction or something like that showing how we were all messed up before we met Christ but as we walk with him we become less messed up amen I'll not be as messed up today as I was 10 years ago when I first accepted Christ amen I'll not be as messed up 30 years after I accepted Christ as I was 10 years after I, there ought to be some growth and our life in this transformation is in the mind. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The, the Greek word for transformation is where we get our English word metamorphosis. It is the transformation of a butterfly, amen, a caterpillar into a butterfly. The caterpillar uh, goes into the transformation stage in the cocoon. And what, came, what went in is not what came out, but the transformation happens inside and it re is revealed outside eventually, amen? And so this is the transformation that takes place. God transforms our heart. That word heart is often a poetic term for soul. And our soul encompasses our mind, our will, and our emotions. So God transforms our mind, our will, our emotions. And eventually it should be displayed outwardly through our bodies. So I find it interesting maybe that, that Paul says that we ought to present our bodies and then the transformation place and it's still our bodies that represent Christ before man and before God but the transformation has to happen on the inside of us be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind the Greek word for renewing means to a renewal a renovation a complete change for the better that is, the change of outward expression is dependent upon the renovation, the complete change for the better of the believer's mental process. Amen. So as our thinking changes as believers, that is where the transformation takes place. And as I think differently, I will do differently. That transformation is by is through a surrendered life unto God, his word, and Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we yield and surrender unto him, our mind is being transformed. Our thinking changes. Amen. What we used to think was right, we can now look at as sin. Amen. Because we don't do it no more. And, and, and we used to think it was all right to go hang out with those who are getting drunk, getting high, amen, doing all kinds of evil. It used to be fun, but my mind has been transformed, and now I see that that's not fun at all. So we must fully surrender our mind. And thirdly, church, we must fully surrender our will. Amen. We must fully surrender our will and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may 
approve what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Prove the will of God. Prove means to put to the test for the purpose of approving and finding that the thing tested meets the specifications laid down to put one's approval on it. It also means to test. <laughs> Amen. God's will is good. God's will is acceptable. God's will is perfect. God's will is for us. Now we must test the will of God by aligning our will with his will. Amen. And so I fully surrender my will unto God. I'm testing the will of God for my life as I surrender my body. Amen. I'm testing the will of God for my life if I, as I surrender my mind to be transformed. Amen. I'm testing the will of God as I walk in obedience to the word. I'm testing it. I'm proving it. I, I, I'm showing that it's good, acceptable, and perfect. We must fully surrender our will. Jesus, as he was headed to the cross, he tells us, Lord, if it is another way, let this cup pass from me. He knew that following the will of God was not going to be easy. He knew that the will of God was going to take him to the cross. He says, if there is another way, take this cup from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. Amen. And so as we're talking about living a fully surrendered life, we have to fully surrender ourselves unto Christ in order to live the life that God has called us to live. This is a process. <laughs> Amen. Every day I wake up, I have to decide that I'm going to live a fully surrendered life. Every day I wake up is a test. Amen. To live in the will of God for my life. Every day I wake up, I've got to render or surrender my body unto him to be used for his glory. Amen. Living a fully surrendered life. And remember, our motive is in light of the mercies of God. What God has done for us. Through his one and only son who died on the cross for our sins. Yet, Romans 5, 8, yet while we were sinners, Christ died. He didn't die because we deserved it. He died because of his love. He died because of his mercy. He died because of his grace. And if I didn't do anything to deserve salvation, I can't do anything to keep my salvation. It's all in Christ. In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. And so Paul can write, amen, to the church at Ephesus. Amen. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for a good work, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It's the will of God that we walk in the works in which we were designed to do. Amen. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, God is good. Amen. Yeah. And if we truly understand that we are shaped to serve, then we have to live a fully surrendered life. It doesn't mean that we won't fall short. I mean, it don't mean that we won't stumble. But each day you wake up, you've got to decide in your mind that you're going to live like God has called you to live. And that is a challenge for believers. Again, Paul writes uh, in, in, in Romans, 
Amen. I often call Romans his doctrinal dissertation because he talks about salvation and he begins with the Jews. And, and this is where we get our, our doctrinal statements, our, our doctrinal understanding of justification and sanctification and, and glorification and, and redemption. Amen. This is all talked about in the book of Romans. And, and Paul says, amen, uh, uh, that as we walk with Christ, that we will still battle with the power of sin in our life. Amen. And he talks about that again. I think that's Romans chapter 7 that he talks about that. Amen. That battle that we have against the You will fall when you will stumble. But get back up. Amen. 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 Get back up. Amen. Don't live a defeated life. Amen. Whenever you fight a war, you don't win every battle. But the war ain't over until the war is over. Amen. Yeah. You might lose some battles along the way, but get back up and keep fighting. Living a fully surrendered life. You have to realize that this is not about you. Amen. This is not about me. If I'm fully surrendered unto God, it's all about him. Amen. And my life has no meaning apart from what God places on it. People are searching for all kind of things in life. They're searching for a purpose. They're searching for a meaning for their existence. They're searching for love. It's found in Christ. Amen. As we stand today, I say all the times, the world is looking for something, and they don't even know what they're looking for. And we have it, but how are they going to know about it if we don't share it? Amen. Amen. You know, even uh, being raised in church. Amen. I, I can still look back over my life and ask that question. Amen. Where would I be if it had not been for his grace? Amen. Amen. But God has me here because of his mercy, because of his grace, because he has a purpose. He has a design for my life. Amen. I am here on purpose and with purpose. And it's not my purpose. It's God's purpose. Yes. Amen? Amen? It's his purpose. And because it's his purpose, no matter what I do, amen, it's going to bring him glory. Amen? Because the glory belongs to him. That's why we can sing every praise but, uh, is to our God. Amen? Every act of worship is to our God. Amen? We can sing that with, with greater understanding if we have fully surrendered our lives unto Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why a lot of these praise songs that we sing have so much meaning. Amen. I give myself away. Amen. I surrender all. All to Jesus. Amen. All to him I owe. Amen. I surrender all. And we have to wake up each and every day with this on our mind and continue to allow the word of God to transform our mind. And as our minds are being transformed, our will will be fully surrendered unto him. Amen. 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 Let us pray.